This video looks at designing generalized predictive control laws in MATLAB. We've shown that a GPC control law has an equivalent Z-transform representation, as given in this particular formula. And if we do that, it means that we can do simple loop analysis. Now, just to remind you, the block diagram takes a form a bit like this. You'll see it was covered in the previous video. So what we're going to be doing in this video is assuming this block diagram structure because that means we can calculate the closed loop poles for a generalized predictive control law using this formula here. Now what particularly is this video going to do? We want to compute the pole polynomial for a number of different examples and in particular demonstrate MATLAB code for doing this so the viewers can use this MATLAB code and do their own examples and be confident that it works. We'll include both CISO and MIMO examples and the relevant code will be available on the Google Sites folder which you can copy if you pause this video now. Now the key algebra that's needed in order to do GPC. First you have to get the prediction matrices and we've summarized those in this box here. So you need to find the matrix H, the matrix P and the matrix Q. Then you can find the control law parameters using this algebra here. And I think there's an H transposed missing there. I apologize. Um, once you've done that, you'll notice that the control law is given by this particular formula here. And this is the control law you would use to implement GPC. You can, if you want, find a Z transform equivalent. And this was covered in the previous video. So you'll see we've got a definition for DK of Z, a definition for PR of Z, a definition for NK of Z. And if you form those Z transforms, then the closed loop pole polynomial comes from this expression here. So in essence, we're going to demonstrate code that goes through these different steps. Now, the implementation required to find the new control action is actually this law here. You remember in the previous video, we said that if you are writing code, you're more likely to implement the law using matrix vector algebra rather than moving to Z transforms, in which case you might as well just leave it in that form. And the key thing is this particular variable here that multiplies the past input increments. And you'll see we've put this little symbol on the top to distinguish between that and the actual controller denominator. And the link between the control denominator dk and this thing is basically a one comma dk check. Now why is this important? Because when you look at the MATLAB code, rather than carrying around this extra symbol, because the code only ever needs this value, we just call it dk for convenience, but you must remember not to get mixed up. First example then, we'll take a system here, simple g of z, which is second order. We're going to take nu equals 3, ny equals 8, lambda equals 1. The first step is to enter the model. And what we can do is we can define the models in MATLAB using vectors to represent the coefficients. So B, you'll see we've got coefficients 1 and 0 0.3. And you remember this code is written in such a way that it assumes B has always got at least a single delay. So we don't bother putting an extra coefficient of 0 in. We let the code deal with that. A has got three parameters. There they are, entered as a vector. And you remember when you're doing Karima models, you normally multiply A by delta. And so that might be called capital A, something like that. So that's the first step in your code. Second step, find the prediction matrices. So we've got a piece of code which is called MPC PredMat. Find the prediction matrices. And you'll see you put into it your A polynomial, your B polynomial, and your horizon. And it comes out with the H matrix, the P matrix, and the Q matrix. Step three, you want to find your control law, so that's called MPC underscore law. <coughs> what does that need? It needs H, P and Q, your prediction matrices. It needs to know NU because we need to know how many columns of H to use in the computation. We need lambda obviously and these last two parameters um, are less critical but the size Y in essence is telling you whether this is a multivariable system or not. And then you've got your control law parameters come out at the end. And finally, 
If you want to get the closed loop pole polynomial PC, you can use this file here, mpc underscore poles, which needs the parameters a, b, n, k, and d, k. So you'll see, philosophically, it's relatively straightforward to do this. So what we're going to do now is go to MATLAB and demonstrate a file which has all these steps so you can copy it and put the systems in of your choice. So there's our MATLAB window and if we go to the M file so you'll see it's here video 2 underscore 4 example 1 you'll see the first step enter A, B, <coughs> size Y it's one dimension, N, Y, N, U and Lambda. So I can just put those in. And clearly, you can change this A and B, you can change NY, you can change NU to be whatever you want. Second step, form the prediction matrices. And you'll see it's transparent. You just use this MPC underscore PREDMAT. Next step, find the control law. So there we go. You can see we've got this MPC law, and it produces NKDKPR. Now, the point is here, you'll see that little note. This computes the entire trajectory, in, it computes the entire delta u future. So if we only want the first increment, then we've got to take the first row of nk and dk. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I can go into that poles, and there's my closed loop pole polynomial. And if I want to look at the parameters, I can see there's my numerator, there's the dk, which you'll notice is the dk check because it hasn't got the one term. and PR, we've basically ignored advanced information, but we'll go into that in a future chapter. Second example, what if we had a slightly different system? Here you can see we've got a f four coefficients in the numerator, four coefficients in the denominator, different NU, different NY. So can we do that one? Okay. So that's ones in example two. Let's just get our command window open as well. And you'll see again, we can just put the coefficients straight in. We can put size y, n, y, n, u, lambda. We just enter them like that. Again, we just do the PREDMAT to get the prediction matrices. We do this MPC law to get the control law. We take the top row to find the first increment. And then we do the pulse. And there's your pole polynomial for this second system. So hopefully you're convinced using the code to find a GPC control law is relatively straightforward. What if you had a multivariable example then? Now, multivariable transfer functions or matrix fraction descriptions are, this is my view, somewhat clumsy. So they're only included here for completeness. If you're always going to use state space if you've got multivariable, then you can skip these last few minutes. Um, so the model parameters are now matrices, and the signals, the input and the output, will be vectors. So if you write a matrix fraction description, it looks similar to the CISO case, but the difference is these coefficients b1, b2, and so on, a1 up to an, they're all matrices, not scalars. So the algebra of prediction and control or definition are actually the same, and we did that in chapter one. So we're just going to summarize those equations. What you'll find is the prediction equations have exactly the same format. The multivariable nature is just embedded into how you do it, and it's not too bad. The definition of the control law, again, we've got a missing H transpose there, is the same. Okay, it's the same there, and it's the same there. So, so far, the fact that we've got multivariable hasn't made any difference. Okay? But where we get a difference is going to show in a minute. But you'll see the control law can still be written in this form. And you might think, well, if this is the case, why not just carry on? Everything seems hunky dory. Well if you're just doing an implementation, you can just about get away with it and everything's fine. But what if you want to do some loop analysis? There's my control law. And here's my model, and you'll notice I've written it as A inverse B because we've got a matrix fraction description. And if you try and find the relationship between the inputs and, for example, the set point, by substituting in, what I've done is I've substituted this value here into here, just for simplicity, then what you notice is it gets a bit clumsy. Because N, K and A are matrices, they're not commutative. So I can't just swap the order of these two parameters. So if I want to swap the position of the inverse, then I've got to do something clever to find basically an equivalent A tilde and NK tilde. And that's messy. So you can do it. 
if you really want to, and you can find the closed loop pole polynomial using an expression like this. But to do that, you first have to solve expressions of this nature. And you might say, well, if all you're doing that for is to calculate the closed loop pole polynomial, I might not be too bothered. Basically, MIMO poles are messy with matrix fraction description models. So we'll give an example just to show that if you exclude calculating the poles, otherwise things are straightforward. We're going to put in a multivariable problem. We can use n equals 4, n y equals 9, lambda equals 0 0.2, and you can see the particular file is video 24, example 3. So you will see that actually the coding otherwise is relatively straightforward. It's a bit messy entering the parameters because of these uh, matrices. So there's some A parameters, there's some B parameters. After this, everything looks the same. Size y equals 3 because it's 3 by 3. Put in my ny, my nu, and my lambda. You'll see the prediction matrix statement is identical. Nothing changed. You'll see the control law computation is identical. Nothing has changed. You'll see when I want the first increment, I've now got to take the first size y rows because obviously in this particular case there are three different inputs. But that aside, you'll see most of the code was identical. So you can go to multivariable if you just want to implement it without too much hassle. But if you want to find the closed loop poles, then you start having to mess around with some algebra and that might be considered a bit beyond the pale. So in summary, we've demonstrated the MATLAB code for computing a GPC control law using a transfer function or Karima model, and we've also demonstrated the code for finding the pole polynomial for the CISO case. Finding the poles for the MIMO case is a bit messy, so I haven't bothered, and I suggest you don't bother unless it's really essential. You don't need the poles, or indeed the transfer function form, in order to implement the control law. Okay, so the transfer function representation is only there if you really need it for analysis. But what this code has done is it's given you the control law, which is all you need to actually do an implementation.